I saw a, a survey, a WebMD survey found that an average American sleeps 5.7 hours a night. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but 5.7 hours a night. And then I also saw the National Institutes of Health says that six or seven hours of sleep is not enough and can lead to chronic sleep deprivation. Now I'm curious, simple question, how many hours of sleep a night do you think humans actually do need to function at a high level? And if we don't sleep that much, what does that mean? This like sleep, like chronic sleep deprivation, like what does it actually do to the body if we don't sleep enough? Well, so the first question is how much sleep do people need? And yes. it's, it's a little bit of, there's a general answer because, mm. and I say this because believe it or not, there are something called chronotypes where people actually, th there's genes that affect how much sleep they actually need. And most people, okay, most people need seven to nine hours of sleep mm -hmm. a night. However, I'll caveat that with that, yes. you know, those outlier people that have certain genes that make them not require quite as much, and they can actually function quite well with less than seven hours. That's the exception, not the rule. They right? can function with less, but is it optimizing their 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 body and their mind it's, with less? It's really interesting because it, it it has to do with their circadian rhythm. So this this twenty four hour clock that our body is on, uh -huh. all of our cells are on, our metabolism, our neurotransmitter production, our hormone production, and when that circadian rhythm is disrupted, things kind of go haywire. And so their, their circadian rhythm, it's like a fundamental difference where it's just a little different. Mm. And so because of that, they can actually be healthier and really? healthy with like less sleep. And it's, I don't know so much about that exception, mm. so I don't want to focus on that. Is that like 1% of the population? I don't know what percent, it's not a lot, but it does exist. Yeah. And I just want to acknowledge its existence um, because you know, there are, People will hear this seven to nine hours, and then there's that whatever one to yes. three percent of people that will yell and scream about how they don't need that. And yeah, they, yeah, they I can function it. on five hours, and I'm yeah. good, and I'm easy. Yeah, but it, but how? Maybe you can function now, but can you function in 20, 30 years? That's like, a and, good and will that affect your body later because you sleep deprived now? Well, if you think about sleep, I mean, it, it's definitely you know a time of rejuvenation, of repair. So all of our repair processes are happening when we're sleeping, whether that's repairing damage to our DNA to prevent us from getting cancer-causing mutations, so they're oncogenic mutations, whether we're repairing our brain, so we're cleaning out a lot of gunk that builds up in our brain throughout the day. These are things that are like little, you know, pieces of protein fragments and mm -hmm. aggregates and, you know, and so when we sleep, it's like we clean that all out. It's a process called the glymphatic system that gets activated and it literally squirts this lymphatic fluid throughout our brain, kind of like a, like a wash, like a cleansing. Really? And it physically forces it out through the lymphatic system. And it's very important for preventing the buildup of protein aggregates like amyloid beta, which is involved in Alzheimer's disease. And it's why sleep is so inherently connected to neurodegenerative disease because mm. it is a repair time, right? Um, lots of things going on with the brain, but also your metabolism and blood pressure. Your blood pressure resets. Everything's resetting during sleep. Digestion shuts down so that you can do all this repair stuff. So um, if you think about like your body as a kind of like a, like a, like a, bat, like a phone, so your, your, body, your body is a phone, and if you don't recharge your phone at night, right? It dies. It dies. <laughs> it's not going to run properly. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to you know, eventually die, and you won't be able to use it. Um, so you know, it, it's kind of like the same thing. You have to recharge your battery when you're sleeping, and that's kind of what you do. Um, and that includes everything from brain function to immune cell function. Your immune system is also replenished um, to metabolism. And... And this is something that I don't think a lot of people think of. Most people, when they think of being sleep deprived, they think of brain fog. I'm like, I'm not functioning properly. I'm not thinking like, you know, my sharpest. But I don't know that most people are thinking of type two diabetes, metabolic syndrome. Mm. And, and this is something, I know I certainly wasn't thinking about it um, until, until I became a new mother and was wearing a continuous glucose monitor. So that's something that you can attach to either your, your arm or I put, put it on my abdominum area and it continually measures your blood glucose levels. 
And of course, when you become a new parent, you're sleep deprived. You're like not you're, sleeping. yeah, especially a mother when you're waking up nursing your child three times a night. I mean, you're getting very fragmented sleep. And um, and I was wearing a continuous glucose monitor, and it was very eye opening what was happening to my my blood glucose regulation. I mean, it was completely shot. What was my, happening? So my levels were looking like pre diabetic. And this is like, I was still eating healthy, right? I was eating my healthy foods, my vegetables and my salmon and- Blueberries. Um, and blueberries, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't as physically active as my usual because, you know, especially, you know, the first month after having a baby. But um, I'll get to the, some good news in a minute. But that was, you know, to me, it was just like, it was so crazy to see like my fasting blood glucose levels so incredibly high uh, without changing my diet, really. And, um, you know, I was still sort of physically active. I was going for walks, like, but I wasn't doing my usual, like, a yeah. run. I eventually Strength started training. doing HIT. But um, so, so the, 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 the point here, here is that actually even just getting one to three hours less sleep per night for three nights in a row. I mean, think how common is it to not to get one hour less of sleep a night for three nights in a row? So common. Yes. So common. It happens to me all the time. All the time. And there's been studies that have looked at, well, what does happen to normal, quote unquote, healthy people that haven't been diagnosed with any sort of metabolic disease? Well, what happens is after three nights of getting one to three hours less, less sleep per night is that their body um, isn't disposing of glucose properly. So their blood glucose levels stay elevated. On top of that insulin, they're not um, making enough insulin to lower the blood glucose levels. And so you get this double whammy, almost looking like insulin resistant uh -huh. or pre-diabetic if you were to just look at the hard numbers. Yes. And again, this is just from not getting enough sleep for three nights in a row. Wow. And it's not even like full on sleep restriction where you're taking you're taking away, you know, four or five hours of their sleep. It's just one to three hours less. And so I mean it's really has profound effects on metabolism. And this sort of accumulates. So there's there's just a cumulative effect. It's called sleep debt. Right, so when you're getting mm -hmm. less and less sleep each night, it's like you build up this sleep debt. Can you and pay off the sleep debt ever? So, the, the 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 good news is is that believe it or not, at least with respect to the you know metabolic effects and also the cognitive effects, is that exercise can help negate a lot of that. And that's what mm -hmm. I also learned with yes. my own personal experience. <clears throat> yeah, and your quote, you have a quote on this that I saw online that said, even one hour of sleep less per night for three nights can disrupt how your body processes sugar and lead to mild insulin resistance. But some good news here, HIT can almost reverse it. So can you go with less sleep, but then train hard and reverse the negative effects? So according to research, yes. And according to my own anecdotal data, yes. And, I, and there's, there's, a, there's reasons why. So when you're doing high intensity interval training, so this is where you're going, you know, you're doing intervals that are hard. Mm -hmm. So you're going above what you normally would do if you're just going for a jog. You're going like 80, 85% of your max heart rate. And you're doing it for a period of time that's an interval. And then you kind of have a recovery period where you're going lighter, right? So you're doing a lot of you know, vigorous intensity exercise where it's like during that interval, you can't talk because you're, no. you're working out too hard. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the real test here. Um, what happens when you're working out really hard like that is that you're pushing your energy system to utilize glucose only. And what happens is you utilize glucose only and you make a metabolite called lactate. And everyone thought lactate, this metabolite you're making when you're going hard is this you know, waste product, byproduct. It's not useful. Turns out very, very wrong. Um, lactate itself is not only used by other tissues. So when you're making lactate, your muscles are making lactate because they're using glucose. The reason they're using glucose is because your body can't get oxygen to your muscle quick enough to use oxygen mm. um, as energy, basically, and make it through something using the mitochondria. Right, right. So basically, you're making this lactate and you're using glucose instead, right? And the lactate then gets shuttled into the brain, it gets shuttled into the heart, into the liver, and it's not only used as a very energetically favorable source of energy, it's also called what's called a signaling molecule. It's the way your muscle communicates with other parts of the body, including going back into the muscle. And so what lactate does is it signals to the cells hey, make more of this or make less of this. And what it does to the muscle is 
the muscles going, I'm consuming a lot of glucose here because that's the only energy I can use. I need to make a way to get more of it. And so lactate actually signals to your muscle to make transporters for glucose, more of them come up. So, so transporters for glucose are kind of sitting below the surface of the muscle. They're not really letting glucose in all the time. But when lactate comes around, they wake up, they go to the surface of the muscle, and they just allow a lot more glucose to come in. Where are they getting that glucose from? Well, the glucose is from your food or from gluconeogenesis, the process of making glucose from other um, materials like glycerol, for example, uh -huh. or amino acids. But is it but, pulling it from like visceral fat or more from the food that you just intake? Um, usually it's from, from the food or glycogen, okay. stored as glycogen. Okay. But um, the point is that those, those glucose transporters that come up to the muscle stay there for like 48 hours. And so your body becomes very, all the glucose that you're eating for the next two days is getting taken up into your muscle very effectively mm. and efficiently. And so the net effect is, you know, this high intensity interval training is getting that glucose out of your, your bloodstream and bringing it to your muscle where you want it. And so if you go back to the sleep story, you know, and there's multiple studies showing this, that people that even do high intensity interval training before they're sleep deprived, or they do it after they're sleep deprived, it doesn't matter if you're doing it within a 48 hour window or so of being, getting less sleep, what's happening is your glucose regulation resets, right? Because you're, you're, you're causing that stress on your muscle to make more of those transporters and so glucose, or, glucose gets taken in better. And then it also affects um, insulin signaling and, as well. So there's a lot of other ways that it's happening. 